Margaret Madeline Chase Smith was an American politician. A member of the Republican Party, she was the first woman to serve in both houses of the United States Congress and the first woman to represent Maine in either. A moderate Republican, she was among the first to criticize the tactics of McCarthyism, an anti-communist witch hunt, in her 1950 speech, Declaration of Conscience. This is an abridged version of her speech to the Senate. Declaration of Conscience Mr. President, I would like to speak briefly and simply about a serious national condition. It is a national feeling of fear and frustration that could result in national suicide and the end of everything that we Americans hold dear. It is a condition that comes from the lack of effective leadership in either the legislative branch or the executive branch of our government. I speak as briefly as possible because too much harm has already been done with irresponsible words of bitterness and selfish political opportunism. I speak simply and briefly in the hope that my words will be taken to heart. I speak as a Republican. I speak as a woman. I speak as a United States Senator. I speak as an American. I think that it is high time for the United States Senate and its members to do some soul searching, for us to weigh our consciences on the manner in which we are performing our duty to the people of America, on the manner in which we are using or abusing our individual powers and privileges. I think that it is high time that we remembered that we have sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution. I think that it is high time that we remembered that the Constitution, as amended, speaks not only of the freedom of speech, but also of trial by jury instead of trial by accusation. Those of us who shout the loudest about Americanism in making character assassinations are all too frequently those who, by our own words and acts, ignore some of the basic principles of Americanism. The right to criticize. The right to hold unpopular beliefs. The right to protest the right of independent thought. Today our country is being psychologically divided by the confusion and the suspicions that are bred in the United States Senate to spread like cancerous tentacles of know-nothing, suspect-everything attitudes. America is rapidly losing its position as leader of the world simply because the Democratic administration has pitifully failed to provide effective leadership. The American people are sick and tired of seeing innocent people smeared and guilty people whitewashed. The nation sorely needs a Republican victory, but I don't want to see the Republican Party ride to political victory on the four horsemen of calumny, fear, ignorance, bigotry, and smear. I doubt if the Republican Party could, simply because I don't believe the American people will uphold any political party that puts political exploitation above national interest. Surely we Republicans aren't that desperate for victory. I don't want to see the Republican Party win that way. Well, it might be a fleeting victory for the Republican Party, it would be a more lasting defeat for the American people. As a woman, 
I wonder how the mothers, wives, sisters, and daughters feel about the way in which members of their families have been politically mangled in Senate debate. And I use the word debate advisedly. As a United States Senator, I am not proud of the way the Senate has made a rendezvous for vilification, for selfish political gain at the sacrifice of individual reputations and national unity. As an American, I am shocked at the way Republicans and Democrats alike are playing directly into the communist design of confuse, divide, and conquer. As an American, I don't want a Democratic administration whitewash or cover up any more than I want a Republican smear or witch hunt. As an American, I want to see our nation recapture the strength and unity it once had when we fought the enemy instead of ourselves. It is with these thoughts I have drafted what I call a Declaration of Conscience. Declaration of Conscience 1. We are Republicans, but we are Americans first. It is as Americans that we express our concern with a growing confusion that threatens the security and stability of our country. Democrats and Republicans alike have contributed to that confusion. Two, the Democratic administration has initially created the confusion by its lack of effective leadership by its contradictory grave warnings and optimistic assurances, by its complacency to the threat of communism here at home, by its oversensitiveness to rightful criticism, by its petty bitterness against its critics. Three. Certain elements of the Republican Party have materially added to this confusion in the hopes of riding the Republican Party to victory through the selfish political exploitation of fear, bigotry, ignorance, and intolerance. There are enough mistakes of the Democrats for Republicans to criticize constructively without resorting to political smears. Four, to this extent, Democrats and Republicans alike have unwittingly but undeniably played directly into the communist design of confuse, divide, and conquer. And five, it is high time that we stopped thinking politically as Republicans and Democrats about elections and started thinking patriotically as Americans about national security based on individual freedom. It is high time that we all stopped being tools and victims of totalitarian techniques, techniques that, if continued here unchecked, will surely end what we have come to cherish as the American way of life.